G'day everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Pierre, Simple Home Brew. I'm doing a craft kit today. It's a Brick Road Cascade APA. Hope you can join me. This is a kit made by uh, Brick Road Brewery. It's a Cascade APA. It's 1.8 litres. The ingredients inside, the concentrate, I should say, is from Muntins. Muntins actually created this as a, uh, a thing for the Australian community to craft premium beers. And it is a premium uh, concentrate by Muntins. So we're gonna open her up, see what it's like. It's, it's really different. It has hops in the lid and the yeast is in the lid as well. So I'm gonna pop it open. I'll pop it open by pressing up. Of course, I'm wearing my gloves today. There you go. Oh, what's in here? We've got American ale yeast, a little gift, a little <laughs> gift. There's a little piece of paper on oh, how to do it. Okay, mix and ferment. Uh, pretty much the same thing. Dry hopping happens on day five of fermentation. It's at 330 grams of Cascade bottle or peg. It's pretty much standard. The equipment you'll need is a boiler, fermentation, chamber, or anything else. So we've got our 30 grams of Cascade hops. It's a pretty it's a blown up bag. It's not a vacuum steel bag. I wonder if it's still in date. It doesn't have a date written on here. But it is a bit puffy so i do have some stored should i trust their kits i'll open it up and I'll give it a smell if it's no good i will use my own american ale yeast it's only six grams uh no use by date on that one either the can does have a use by date on it it is best before the 11th month of 2026 so the can is quite good uh, it looks like the kit I would suggest is okay. We well, should I use it? It's probably okay. I think I might use my own yeast though. I do have American West Coast ale yeast, so it. I guess it would just ferment a bit more, a bit better. I don't know. I'll tr should I trust the? Uh, I'm in a dilemma here. Oh, it's only six grams of yeast, and I found last time six grams kind of isn't enough. Especially to ferment down. I'm going to use the. I'm going to use. It. I'm going to use a premium yeast that I've supplied. I will use their Cascade hops. The unit and the kit is still in date, so it says be best before the 11th month of 2026. So I have to trust that. I also have Cooper's dextrose. It's just dextrose. Um, I need 1.5 kilograms of Cooper's dextrose, so I'll do that, and we shall start mixing. I have my Apollo Titan 30 litre fermenter. It is soaking in sanitizer at the moment, so I'll tip that out. Just right, the sanitizer is ready to go. It is tipped out. I do need to pop hot water. This is boiled. This is two litres of boiled hot water. I'll pour that into the uh, fermenter. This will help dissolve the ingredients. I'll grab a packet of, now remember I need 1.5 litres of this product, so we shall open up, let's tip it in, it's just dextrose, it's one, one kilo per box, I bought this in my local brew shop, that's all I had at the moment at, at the time, so I was just using this one, and of course we're working with hot water at the moment, so sanitising products and items going in is not essential at the moment, I probably should have put this in before I put the hot water in, what are you going to do? I'm going to roughly do this because it says one and a half kilos on the packet. I'm going to roughly measure out one and a half kilos. Just by sight. I'm going to just do that. Squish it up. It's not idle, but it's not ideal, but come on. Really? Some people would just put the whole packet in, but I don't know. The use might not like that. And it might get too much 
too much boozy flavouring in it. I reckon that'll be right about one and a half. That's like I said, a rough estimate. And I just drops all the sugar everywhere. Now I'm gonna get ants. Put that in there. So that's done. I will give it a stir. Grab my little stirring sticky thingy. This one here. We'll throw that in. I'll just give that sugar a bit of a dissolve. And then we'll uh, pop in the what do you call this? What do you call this? It's called extract. That's what it's called. Looking forward to it. All right, can opener. One can opener. Quickly open this can. Again. Good if I had a little winder. Wouldn't that be good? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-boil the kettle so I can rinse this out with hot water. I haven't actually heated a can up like I usually do. That's something you normally do. Oh, the can open it. I'm going to open it. Yeah. What's going on here? It's like a different kind of a lip. Here we go. It's a different kind of a lip. Oh, look at it. how tacky and sticky this is. Wow. Smells good. Pour that in. Oh, it is so thick. Look at this. Oh, I should have heated it up. Things I do. Just for the hell of a heck of doing something different. Right, I'm going to sit that there just to let it um, dissolve and I'll fill up my kettle with another couple of litres of hot water uh, with water and then heat it up and then uh, we'll go from there. Unfortunately, I didn't measure what I was putting in again. Uh, I will measure and do the calculations and just get it close. That's all I can do. Now, while that's boiling, I'll let you know that I put in these kind of kits and through my beers, I put a half a Camden tablet in, not a whole one. I am filtering my water out, so the filter removes a lot of the chlorine and chloramine in our systems, but it doesn't remove it all. So a half a Camden tablet tends to help reduce off flavors in the in the beer later on when we ferment it. Um, so I'll pop that in, I'll put that in with the hot water. I don't need to show you that, I suppose. So in hindsight, you gotta heat up your concentrate. It is very thick. Uh, if it's warm, it'll run a lot better and pour a lot better. And it is cold here today. It's probably uh, 6 degrees, 7 degrees this morning. My kettle's nearly boiled. So I'll pour some into this container here. And now I do have a, a measuring jug. So I'll measure up uh, how much the tin takes and uh, then pour it in and see how much water is in that. And that way we know how much we've actually poured into the fermenter. Um, all right, so pour it in. It's super hot, so I'm going to have to give this a good old stir. But I've got to be careful now because it's super hot. All right, there you go. Stick it that way. This is my, uh, if you're wondering what the curve is on it, it's my wine stirring kit uh, stick. And I should have, what I should have done again. I'm not doing everything correctly. What I should have done is poured only half the can full of hot water and stirred it and then filled it all the way up later. But, you know, it's early morning and I am a bit absent-minded today. Can't help myself. All right, I stirred it. I will pour it. That's going to be super hot. I need something to cool it, keep it cool so I can actually hold on to it. A bit of cloth would do. It should be long enough that I can pour it in here. <coughs> Bloody hell, that was close. She slipped. Try again. And it's almost one and a half liters. And we'll put a bit more hot water in there. That smells good. Okay, so the pour I just did in the from the tin 
gave me one, uh, 1.4. So it's 1.4 liters in this whole tin on its own. Good to know. Now I can do some calculations. Now I'm not going to pour this this lot. I'm not going to pour that in yet because this is already a measurement that I'm I've already calculated. So I need to now tip this in just like that. Calculate what I've done. So we've got one tin of concentrate, one tin of hot water, and two liters of hot water. So. 1.4 plus 1.4 is 2.8 plus 2 litres is 4.8 and now I've got to pour this bloke in so 4.8 plus this and I'll have to measure this in the jug as well so I'll know how much I'm putting is just over 500 grams 500 ml sorry let it settle a bit so 600 stop shaking I hate it when it does that It's 550, 4.8 plus 550, 5.35 litres. And the Camden tablet went in with it as well. All I need to do now is actually mix it all in. Get it all dissolved in the actual fermenter. Wow, you can feel it all stuck to the bottom. Very, very thick. It won't take long to dissolve though, so you can just stir away. We need to top it up to 23 litres now of cold water to try and cool it down. Uh, 23 litres minus 5.535 litres is 17.465. So 17.465 will be calculated or put onto my filometer. I bought it from uh, Kegland. It will accurately, hopefully, fill it up to the right literage and then I'll be, I'll be apples. I advise guys, measure before you do this. I keep forgetting to do this and it's one of the biggest problems that I do when I brew. Anyway, I'll calculate it, I'll pour it up and I'll fill it. Okay, the filometer is set to 17.46. Yeah, 17.46, that'll do. And we shall fill it. Now, if you don't know, I have a filter on my watering system and the hose I use is actually RV, uh, so it's human consumption safe. And that, uh, I've been using this for quite some time now. It's really quite good. It doesn't add flavors to it. The hose works a treat. It's, it's run from my front tap at home, at the house and runs through into my shed. It's plumbed with, um, you know, just copper gear and it doesn't leak. Even though I can see the water there. It doesn't leak all the time. <laughs> so we've, we've, we've got six liters in, got a few more liters to go. This is a 30 litre keg uh, <coughs> fermenter, so it should be able to take plenty of water. And what I'm doing while I'm doing this is aerating it, so I'm getting it oxidised. And uh, of course I'm cooling it down, the water is very cold here at the moment, so it should cool everything down really good. Right down to the temperature you probably need. I'll just quickly rinse my spoon. Oh, shit! Watch what you're doing Pierre, you're going to make an absolute mess. Nearly there. Three more liters. Oh, 
just in time. <laughs> Holy jeez. Righto. All I need to do now, guys, is add the sanitizer. I do need to now sanitize this packet because we are at a colder temperature. It is susceptible to bacteria. So I've just dipped the packet into sanitizer. Grab my sanitized scissors, just like that. Cut the top off and we shall let it in. I will uh, take a, a sample so I can check the gravity. I have my sanitized dip tube and ball. This floats up as the unit gets put in and a little pickup tube sits under the wort to uh, pick up the beer when it's finished fermenting. This is a pressure fermentation kit. I'll throw that in, pop the lid on there like that. It has been sanitized of course. And what I'll do is I'll actually give this a little bit of a shake like this. Just to get the yeast circulated around. Whew, that's quite heavy. And now I will pressurize it a little bit because I'm going to pressure ferment this at 20 degrees Celsius continuously until it's fermented. So I'll pop that on here. This is the notch side is the actual gas side. And this is when I start, it's when I grab a sample as well. I have a little device called a Quickie that I got from Keg King. It's a beautiful little device, very easy to get um, samples with. I just dip that into a uh, sanitizer at the moment. I'll pop a little hose on it so I can actually grab a sample. Everything has been dipped in sanitizer. This is a quick grab. Just want to grab a small sample so I can actually check the gravity. And the good thing about it, I've just put it under pressure. All I have to do, push on this quickie and it will fill up my sample pot, or whatever you call this thing, just like that. Oh, yeah. For those of you who haven't done this before, this is a device that measures the gravity of your wort. Um, I'm today going to measure the starting gravity. So I'll throw that in there and it will give me a reading of how much sugar is available to ferment. So on the end, it's going to be the foam. So if you get, get to a part where it's foam, just give it a spin. Sometimes the foam will go out to the outlet edges and then you just let it sit. I have to put it on a flat surface to allow it to settle. And apparently the starting gravity is the amount of sugar that's in the wort, not fermentable sugars, it's just the amount of sugar. What you do is you write down the measurement. Now I'll take a photo of that with my phone, just to give you an idea what it looks like and what to read. And uh, I'll give you the starting gravity here. And then when it finishes fermenting, I'll give you the new final gravity or finished gravity so we can calculate how much alcohol we actually have produced in our beer. All right, well, that's it for now. I'm gonna pop this in the fridge. I'm gonna keep it under a constant temperature and I will get back to you as soon as it finishes fermenting. I actually gotta add the 30 grams of Cascade hops into the fermenter at about five days and I'll show you how I do that. I left it in my shed thinking we're gonna get some good weather. Turns out we didn't. It became pretty apparent that the weather was turning for the worse. And uh, most days we were about 12 degrees Celsius. So that's been fermenting at a much lower temperature. So the fermentation would have gone slower. Anyway, what I'm saying is it's going to take longer. Uh, it probably will be ready within two weeks rather than one week. So that's just how things are. We'll let you know when it's happened. All right, it's been six days. I need to remove the pressure out of the fermenter and add the 30 grams of Cascade hops. Now, I'm going to open the packet, see how good they are. Uh, hopefully it's all right. We should soon see. So here they are. This is the packet they provide in the top of the lid of the 
can that we're doing. And uh, there's no use by date on it. So I figure it must be okay. It's in a silver seal, but it's not really sealed. It's not really vacuum sealed. I'm hoping they're all right, which we'll soon find out. Pops are very sanitary anyway. They are like a natural sanitizer. Okay, I can smell them. Smell? They smell good. I think we'll use them. All right, I'm gonna let the gas out. This will let the... Uh... Now doing this creates a foam build. So I'm gonna to have to be quick. Look at that, you can probably see that. In goes the hops. Back to 30 grams, back on with the lid and I will actually throw in a little bit of gas. Actually, my pressure is, pressurize itself. It normally does when you um, open it. Pop the lid on, close it again and seal it straight away. It normally builds up a bit of pressure. I drop the hops in. No, I might just quack some in there. I'm not trusting that. And uh, I'll try and purge as much oxygen out as I can that I've just added to it. Wrong button. Quickly pop this off. And I'm throwing in about up to 15 pounds of pressure. So that it's something in there to purge. All right, that'll look. Still leave it under pressure. It's got about two and a half pounds of pressure in there at the moment. Now I'm gonna say right now, I open the lid up, got the pressure and let the air out or let the gas out. The smell I'm smelling isn't awesome. It doesn't smell, uh, it doesn't smell fruity in any way, but that's not saying that it's gonna be a bad beer. It's just saying that it's not what I was expecting, if that makes sense. Anyway, I'll just leave it until it finishes fermenting now and hopefully it comes out nice and clean, nice and fresh and a good tasting beer. All right, when you see me next, I would have it transferred and pour myself a glass. We'll see you then. It is transfer time. Now, I've been transferring it for a little while. I've had a lot of trouble. I had a lot of trouble with it clogging up from the hops. Now, I should have put a hot bag. Yeah, what do you do? You forget about these things. And I did, I forgot to put a hot bag in. But nonetheless, it is transferring properly now. It is running nice and smoothly. You can probably hear the hissing. The final gravity is 10.014. I'll put the ABV up here for you. And now we're gonna taste this nice cloudy beer. It smells, uh, when I brewed beer years ago, it smells like brewed beer from, while, from years back. I put in a different yeast and uh, hopefully it's coming out all right. It's got a bit of carbonation to it, so let's try, shall we? Mm. I'm not gonna complain about that. That's really quite nice. Okay, what I'm getting is um, a hop aroma, but not very strong, but I'm getting a lot more of a yeasty smell to it. And that's, I guess, will dissipate as age happens. I haven't had that kind of yeasty smell in my beers for quite some time. The reason I think is because I didn't have a fermentation fridge to put this in. So it's been fermenting very slowly. It's been three weeks, to be honest. And uh, yeah, it's been fermenting very, very slowly at about between you know 11 degrees and 20 degrees. It's been up and down. So that could be the reason why I'm smelling a lot of hop scent at the moment, but it will dissipate. It still has finished fermenting. And I'm getting a bit of a sweetness. It is very, very palatable though tasty i can taste the citra hops i can taste a fruit um and beer it can taste wheat it, it's very very tasty i guess uh, after cooling this down refrigerating it for a week or two aging it i'll give it another go over and uh, i'll let you know how it tastes then it'll come up in the next video Guys, I'm wrapped. This is actually a good one. Turned out all right. It was really hard to make. It was really hard to transfer. Should have kept to the rules of having a hot bag. Didn't do it this time. I, just, I was just a bit lazy in a rush, really. And it looks like I've got myself a nice beer to share with my friends. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thank you to my Patreon members for supporting this channel. I have 30 members there right now. And if you guys want to support here's Simple Home Brew to keep these kind of beers coming, please do. Uh, I can't do it without that. So if you guys are happy to spot me a, a couple of dollars, 
and you'll get you'll be able to get a view of the video for free before I post it live on YouTube. Guys, have a great one. We'll see you in the next brew. Cheers.